How did the average non-elite ancient Romans live? How did they spend their leisure time? Too often we have forgotten these less than famous individuals from the Roman world. To correct this oversight, this is the start of a new series of daily life episodes in ancient Rome. And in this episode, we will look at a number of average Romans who were just trying to get by or those who showed off how they had made it in Roman society. To gain real insights into the lives of average Romans, we need to look at Roman art, in particular from Rome and the Vesuvian cities, so that we can get an authentic feel of the lives of these Romans of no particular fame. In this episode, we'll take a look at a number of specific events, jobs, and portraits. Let's look at daily life of the Romans through art. Let's begin with writing and records and some famous images of portraits of modestly wealthy Romans. From this woman to this couple from the house of Terentius Neo. Each image reveals the tabella, wax tablets held within a wooden frame and paired with a pen for inscribing on the wax. Including this in your portrait was a sign of education and status in Roman society. But beyond these paintings, we actually have the case of Lucius Caecilius Secundus, who was active in Pompeii from 15 to 62 AD, and it's in his house they were found in 1875 a treasure trove of 153 wax tablets that were banking records of the life and activity of Lucius Caecilius Secundus in Pompeii. In one such receipt, on display in the Museo Archeologico di Napoli, it includes his work in the Falonica business. Now, what happened in a Falonica? The Falonica was a place to finish woven cloth and to clean it once it was dirty. And we're so fortunate that we have a pillar preserved from a Falonica in Pompeii, the Falonica of Lucius Veranius Hepseus, that details all of this specific activities in a felonica. Now, the first thing that you would do is to wash the cloth in water and some other material, urine, potash, natron, and other materials that were related to get the cloth clean and to degrease it. And who's treading the water? It's slaves, including children. The second step was to rub into the cloth fuller's earth, which served to whiten it. Then you would rewash it and you'd actually squeeze out the water with a press, which is depicted, and then dry it out, hanging it on long beams of wood and also comb it out. Finally, you'd fumigate it with sulfur placing the cloth on a wicker frame called the Viminea Cavia, which is depicted here. Life at a Roman port is beautifully depicted in the famous Terlonia Relief, recently on display in the Capitoline Museums. This relief comes from Portus, the great imperial port of Ostia Antica, and it shows a scene of life in Portus, which is highlighted by the representation of the Pharos of the lighthouse with a flame burning on top. The site is busy and industrial. And it gives us a sense of the ships arriving at the harbor, the incredibly complex rigging and the sails of the ships. Here's an offering from the master of the ship and thanks for safe travel, and a small tugboat that's attached to the larger ship, and even an attendant offloading an amphora. Let's take a look at this related image of a boat not a seafaring vessel, but a river transport boat, a Navis Cauticaria, called the Isis Geminiana. And it was found in a columbarium in 1865 on the Ostiense Necropolis along the Via Laurentina. And what you have here is the scene of the deposit of dry goods into a modius, a dry measuring container. And there are also slave attendants or freedmen that are carrying on their shoulders sacks of grain, ultimately destined to go upriver, up the Tiber, 
to that great consumer city, Rome. Where did you eat in the busy cities in the Roman Empire? Oftentimes, you were in a capona or at the Mapoleum, the fast food counters. And we have extraordinary images preserved from Pompeii, Isola Sacra, and Ostia Antica. In the first scene, we have from the Capona of Salvius in Pompeii, four individual scenes, giving us an idea of the dynamic life inside the bar. In the first scene, you have people kissing with the caption, I don't want to something with Myrtalis. In the second scene, there are men drinking, they have their drinking cups, and they're calling out to a barmaid, probably for more alcohol. In the third scene, men are seated playing dice. And in the fourth scene, it seems those same two men have now begun fighting, yelling obscenities at each other as the barkeeper or innkeeper intervenes, telling him to take the fight outside. How little has changed. Here's another image of a bar scene. This one from the Isola Sacra Necropolis, in which you have a representation of the Faros, the lighthouse from Portis. And then you have a scene of a bar counter with wares on display for sale. Here's another scene of a bar, in this case from Ostia Antica itself. And this is one of the most unique and dynamic bar scenes we have from the ancient world. We have apparently the owner of the bar behind the counter is a woman and she has in front of her two plates with fruit. Above her are a number of fowl that are on display for sale and beneath her counter there are caged birds as well as caged rabbits. Finally, maybe strangest of all, on the counter next to her are actually a pair of monkeys. Are these pet monkeys? Are these monkeys for sale? We're not really sure, but overall it's giving us a sense of the dynamic, the hustle and bustle in the scene of a port city like Ostia Antica and the dynamic of people buying and selling. This was where you went to eat on a daily basis if you were just staying in an inn or if you were renting a space above the shop, you didn't have that full kitchen of the domus. This is where you went to get your daily meal. All kinds of processions were commonly observed in Roman cities. Now the highlight in ancient Rome was the Roman triumph. You had soldiers carrying a ferculum, which had uh, different kinds of trophies, even defeated foes. You had a procession of animals that were being sacrificed. And ultimately there's the general in his chariot. He's God for a day. He's the great champion of Rome. But there are many more modest processions that took place all the time in the streets of Roman cities. Here's one of the carpenters, the Fabri Tignari. And it was depicted in their office in Pompeii. And you see carpenters in a procession carrying their own ferculum or beer. And what they're carrying is a small wooden shrine with different acts of work. There's a partially preserved image of Minerva, their patron goddess. There's a statue of a figure that has been identified as Daedalus, another sponsor of the carpenters. He himself was a famous carpenter in mythology. So maybe this scene which also depicts people sawing wood. Maybe this is a scene from the festival of the Quinquatria, which was a festival to honor the goddess Minerva. And we can take a look at this related image from Rome, from the Collegium, the association of the Fabri Tignarii on the Capitoline Hill. This was found in 1938. It's in Monte Martini Museum today. Historically, these carpenters took care of the roofing system of the Temple of Jupiter Optimus Maximus. And here you see again, Minerva is their patron goddess overseeing their work, their depictions of saws and a square. There are many other images that depict jobs of people in the Roman world. From metal workers, this is from the Borgia collection, now in the Archaeological Museum of Naples, showing metal smiths 
if not but in particular working with copper. And we have these mosaic workers actually cutting and making the individual tessidae. What a job! But the results were absolutely stunning as we see from this incredible collection of a variety of mosaics from Monte Martini Museum. We've just begun this new series on daily life in the Roman world, so stay tuned for more episodes. You can also tune in to our free live lectures throughout each month. Just go to ancientromelive.org and subscribe to the newsletter. And of course, we appreciate your support. Go to ancientromelive.org support so we can make more great original content.